Hi everyone, my name is Jacob Reed and welcome back to my channel. Today is the fifth and final uh, part of our Twin Peaks review, my Twin Peaks rewatch discussion with Allison McGaw. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hey everyone, what's up? This ending is crazy. These are some of the best episodes. Uh, we think that, which one, uh, 16? may be the best. I think 16 is the best. It could be 7. I don't know. The, the, I think 16 is the peak of peaks. So, yeah, let's get started with this review because it's going to be a long one. It's, it's probably going to be much longer Buckle than the other ones. Buckle your seatbelts. Yeah. Before we cross over into another dimension. Uh, so, it starts off with Nadine coming over to Ed and she lets Ed be with Norma after she shovels herself out of the shit. Um, I she lets him free. Yeah, she lets him free. Because she's been a bitch to him for 40 years. So she finally lets them be happy. And I like how Ed and Norma got to be together in the end. It was very nice. Glad we see Ed with a happy ending. Yeah, Ed and Norma are always like, the most normal people in this crazy show. Um, so I, I, like, I think this show does a really good job of throwing in small bits of nostalgia. With kind of having cameos from classic characters. Without relying too heavily on it, like Star Wars. It's not like, yeah, where they play the theme song every five minutes. Yeah. They save, they save those for, like, really special moments, like Audrey dancing, or Cooper waking up, or Laura Palmer, him saving Laura Palmer. It's um, definitely not as cheesy as the original series. Yeah, they do a really good job at not <laughs> overusing the nostalgia, but still having it, like, for those special moments. Um, so moving on, Evil Cooper... When he's at the convenience store, it looks like inside of the painting from Fire Walk with Like me. the wallpaper? Yeah. Like when Mrs. Chalfont gave Laura the painting and she said, I want you to hang this on a wall, and Laura has a dream of going inside the painting. That looks like the convenience store. Interesting. And we find out that Philip Jeffries is a giant machine. It looks like, like something from a 20s silence, like a silent film. It's like a giant teapot. Yeah. But well, David Lynch sculpted it himself, and he wanted to clarify that he didn't mean for it to look like a teapot. Oh, okay. It it just looked that way, but I don't know. He said he he said he wishes he did a l less round, so it didn't look like a teapot. Was I just seeing things, or did I see like David Bowie's face in the in the bottom right of the smoke? Am I? I didn't see anything okay. like that. I might have been. Maybe I'm just seeing things. I don't know, but yeah, Philip Jeffries is a. Giant machine now. Yeah. I like how David Lynch honors his dead actors by making them look all freaky. Like, one's a giant tea kettle thing, and the other one's just a floating head. It's, it's strange. It could be to... seen as a little bit insensitive, but I don't know. I don't think they killed. Like, yeah, I don't think they so. Just, the they... family obviously gave him permission, right? Yeah, and David Lynch is known for having really good relationships with his actors. Like, like that's how so many people came back. It's because they all like him. But... It seems like even Bob slash Koopal, I mean, yeah, evil Koopal, the doppelganger, doesn't know who Judy is. Because he asks Philip Jeffrey, who is Judy? Yeah, I don't think anybody knows. It's like a different entity that's, like, bigger than everything. Yeah. Golden Cole said later in the episodes, it was like Jude, which is like some evil dog spirit. So, maybe, like, once he comes in contact with Bob, they could do something evil. I don't know. Um, I guess I just added this real quick. I wish Leland was in this more, just like Firewalk with me. He was like one of the main characters. I wish he was in this more, but um, it's good to see him at least. Yeah. That's all. Let's move on. Okay, so Becky's gross crackhead boyfriend and Donna's sister are doing co are on cocaine in the woods, and he suits himself. He kind of looks like uh, Theon Greyjoy from Game of Thrones. Uh, crackhead Ron Weasley. Yeah. You don't see that? Okay. I don't know. I see th I see Theon Greyjoy after Ramsey took him. But he gets shot. Did you mention that? Yeah. Okay. I think he suits himself. Um, so, it, this show does a really good reference to Sunset Boulevard. When Krupal, or Dougie, turns on the TV and he sees one of the characters saying, Get me Golden Cole on the phone. Because that's good, because David Lynch has said in the past that one of his favorite movies is Sunset Boulevard. And that's where he got the name for Golden Cole. And, um, possibly... Possibly Norma, Norma. but I don't know about that one. Um, so... We think that's when he wakes up, when he hears Yeah, him. that's when he gets his memories back, or at least he knows... To crawl to the To crawl across the floor and put his fork into the outlet. Um, outlets, I've noticed that outlets are seen in the season, Oleol, 
And I think that will settle this. At least I know, like, on second watch. Because a lot of times in the season, the camera pans over and zooms in on outlets before this happens. So outlets are a big part of the season. So I feel like that full settled something. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the girl later on the episode, doing that roadhouse music thing, she crawls through the roadhouse floor the same way that Cooper crawls to the outlet. So we'll get back to that yeah, it's later. It's a parallel that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then also in this episode, we see the log lady dying. And I just think that was very sad because whole being a bit scared of death might reflect the actresses since the actress was also dying of cancer at the time. And seeing the reactions from the rest of the cast, like Hawk and Lucy... When he comes to tell and them. Andy, yeah, when Hawk tells them, it was also sad, because those scenes were filmed after the actress died. So not only did the characters lose the fun, but the actors did themselves. Um, it's good to see her in it, though. Yeah. Uh, it takes Audrey and her no-neck husband, Charlie, <laughs> five episodes to leave the house. Like... She's they keep de debating whether yeah. put your coat on. We're going. Yeah, it takes forever to leave the house. But I love Bobby more than you. No, it was uh, uh Billy? Billy. Billy. Billy, I love Billy more than you. Yeah, and so he's just like, okay, Andre. Uh But they finally leave. Um Okay, so Lado oh or Leo, I don't know. Evil Cooper kills Richard, um, who was him and Audrey's son after Evil Cooper raped Audrey twenty five years ago. And Jerry sees it from a distance, but he thinks it's another hallucination. He thinks his binoculars killed it. Yeah, killed bad them. binoculars. Bad, bad binoculars. binoculars. So then we see more of these two white trash assassins who were sent to kill Dougie by Evil Cooper. Uh, one of the female, fun fact, she was in a uh, Tarantino? Tarantino movie, um, The Hey Flight. She's really good in that, and she's in this too. But anyways, yeah, the crazy accountant guy. Um, he goes fucking, he fi fucking flips, and he rams the car, um, into their van, and then he pulls out his gun and starts shooting. Well, no, she does first, and then he pulls yeah, back. Yeah, because they won't get out of his driveway. And then he kills them both, and the FBI comes. I mean, it's I'm, a pretty cool scene. It's, it's a, a great, pretty cool it's scene. It's a crazy scene, it comes out of nowhere, but in his defense, they were being kind of rude for him. He politely asked <laughs> yeah. for them to get out of his driveway, and she was like, fuck you, I'm not getting out of your fucking driveway, but, so I kind of, yeah, I'm kind of on his side. Because, mm -hmm. like, yeah, he's just like... I've had enough of this accountant bullshit. Yeah. I'm done. Uh-huh. So, you've noticed something? Um... Oh, yeah. Um, so, the noise that in the Dougie's hospital room after he wakes up... Yeah. Um, and Cooper stands up and he's walking around. It's the same noise that's in the Great Northern Hotel when... Um, Ben. Uh, ben and that woman, his assistant, his lady. assistant lady, they're hearing the noise and they're like, "What is that?" So yeah. we don't know what that means. Um, do you have any thoughts, Jacob? I have no idea. Maybe it's like I I don't know because probably has something to do with the Black Lodge. The Black Lodge. Maybe it's whenever like Mike shows up in the series. Maybe whenever Mike shows up. Yeah, you brought that up last time. Remember? Whenever Mike shows up and that sound plays, maybe those scenes take place at the same time. Ben is at the Great Northern. Like, maybe those scenes are happening at the same time. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Huh. Um, so, Cooper wakes up, and he says, and the, and the guy's I like... I am the FBI. Yeah, I am the FBI. Uh, it's the perfect anticipation with Dougie leading up to Coop. They took 16 episodes to get healed, but he's finally back, and... It's totally worth it. It's definitely worth the wait. It's, it's at the right time it comes back. Yeah. Um... I noticed that the song that plays when Diane comes up to try and kill Golden Cole is the same song that plays when Evil Cooper was introduced. And I think that full shadows that Diane is also a topo or a doppelganger. Mm -hmm. Just like Evil Cooper is. And just props to Laura Dorn. She's a fantastic actress. Her face, the way her face moves as she walks up those stairs and goes to the hotel room. And also her, like, remembering being yeah, raped the by story, Evil Cooper. Yeah, the story, yeah. She was just a great... She's, she's a great like, actress. it's not me, it's not me. Or yeah. And she it's realizes a she's scene. a doppelganger, and, like, the doppelganger takes over, and, um, the Tamara Preston shoots her and stuff. So she's a doppelganger, and she gives one last fuck you to Mike before he destroys her. <laughs> okay, moving on. Yeah. Um, one of the, um, probably one of our favorite or most interesting, um, 
confusing scenes is um, Audrey. So Audrey has her little dance. They finally get to the bar, and um, two men get into a fight. Yeah, and that's what makes Audrey freak out, and she goes to old, real no neck husband and says, <laughs> "Get me out of here!" And she wakes up in a white gown, staring in the meal, and it looks like she's in some white void. At least the rooms are like white. You said maybe it's a hospital, but it might it's, be a mental hospital. Yeah, it's just white. That's the background. So we don't really know if was she dreaming. Was she, is she, like, having hallucinations or something? Did she create another reality for herself? Is she dead? Is, is she dead? Another, yeah. Is it another reality? We don't know. Um, is she still in a coma? Did you say that? Y- yeah, I don't I know. That but could the be book, something. But, but the, the book, book confirms that she was only in a coma for three weeks. Okay. So well, Maybe was it, David Lynch would say fuck that to the book. But. So I think you realized this when... Um, no, I think... Um, I did, re- I, did I realize that? Um, you realize that. Yeah. So, so when Koopal, I mean, evil Koopal electrocutes Witzold, and Witzold dies, the humming sound is the same as when she snaps back into reality from her delusion or whatever. You hear a buzzing sound when she's looking into the meal. So I think just like the Koopal Ben thing, Audrey and Witzold thing, those scenes might also be happening at the same time, or in two different realities, just like the Ben Koopal scene. So maybe both of those scenes are happening in different realities at the same time. Uh, we already brought that up, right? We didn't bring up Judy. Oh, okay. So, well, we're finally talking about Judy. Yeah, after 25 years of not talking about Judy, we finally talk about Judy. So, <laughs> um, But still, it's like, what is Judy? Who is Judy? Who is Judy? What are our goals? We don't know. I, think we already discussed I understand that. I think why you you said in like one of the first episodes you think it's that creature in the box and stuff. Yeah. Um, I can see why you think that now. I, I feel like it's kind of obvious too. Mm-hmm. So. Um, does the giant in Major Briggs' head, giant head, live in the White Lodge? Like, is that black and white, kind of Chultz-like building? Is that the White Lodge? And you think the White Lodge is. It, well, Major Briggs in the original series, he explains that the White Lodge is where the good spirits come from, and it's a fantastic place, as opposed to the Black Lodge. Gotcha. So, it's like Twin Peaks' version of, the like, heaven, kind of. Okay. I don't really know. It's some out, it's like other plane of dimension. Yeah, because like even Black Cooper's, Lodge. like, in a box, in a jail box or whatever. His face yeah. in that scene. And the, we know that the giant is a good guy. Because he sends Lord Earth to stop Bob. And he heals um, Cooper in the old series, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or at least he gives him, like, instructions to help him solve the case. Um, so, you have a th- you have a theory about the box? Yeah. That with Judy in it? Well, we're talking about the box. Um, I guess this is just... I don't know. When they were talking about... Um, when Gordon Cole was talking to, to Albert and that lady in the office about what happened with Laura Dern her character, um, I feel like he was talking about a plan they were trying to devise so Cooper wouldn't, um, he said, like, if I ever go missing, he told Gordon Cole, um, make sure to find me or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So either, I feel like the box was a plan by Cooper, Gordon Cole, and Major Briggs to figure out, like, how to bring back Cooper, or maybe to figure out what Judy was. I don't know, that's just a theory, because what is the box? Because Judy was in the box, and Cooper was in the box, so what does that mean? I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, I think that's plot, plot's blue book. Yeah, that's the yeah, blue word book. that you had for it, yeah. Um, and the Blue Rose case, I feel like that's just like the tome of the X-Files, you know? Because those are just cases that are like strange supernatural. and supernatural. So there was the X-Files before the X-Files was a thing. Uh, I like when... When all the characters come together in the Sero Station for the final showdown between Bob and Glove Man. It's kind of like a finale, and then we have a second finale. Yeah, it's like the finale. Like, we have Bobby, James, Andy, Lucy, Koopal, other Koopal. Cole. Cole, Albo, Diane. We have, like... Freddy. Freddy. We have the Mitchum Brothers. We have those three strange pink ladies. Lucy, Lucy. I think I meant to know. Oh, okay, yeah. So everyone's uh, there. Yeah, but before that, Evil Koopal walks in... And they think it's the normal Koopal at first, but evil like Lucy asks him if he wants some coffee, and he says, "No, no, thank you." So obviously, 
that's not Agent Cooper that we yeah. know. Red flag. Good Cooper wants the coffee when he he says put on a pot. Yeah, when he's calling Lucy, and that's when Lucy realizes that that cell phone. Cooper, she understands cell phones now. Yeah, she realizes that that is the evil Coop that walked in, and the good Coop's on his way because he likes coffee. So she has a badass moment of suiting evil Coopal, and she kind of saves the day there, right before he kills Sheriff Truman. So she saves his life, and I, 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 when, first time I watched this, I did not expect that at all. You know, uh, what do you have to say about that one? Yeah, I really liked that a lot. Um, so after Lucy suits the evil Koopal, Bob kind of comes out of him. He like leaves the doppelganger and starts. He's a giant meatball. He's a giant meatball. Um, and he starts attacking Koopal, but Freddy, Glove Man, I despise you, Holt Man, Glove Man, uh, Glove Man destroys the flying meatball Bob with his glove, and th the glove is given to him by the giant, because he describes a situation similar to Andy's situation and Agent Koopal's situation. It was his destiny. It was his destiny. Yeah. And so, after that, Koopal's face is on the screen. Very interesting choice. Yeah, he's on the screen watch as if he's watching the events happen. So I feel like that's Koopal from the future remembering it or something. Or maybe it's Richard remembering it. Richard from the future. And he says, we live inside of a dream. Which is the same thing Philip Jeffries said. So Koopal also got lost in time similar to Philip. Because I feel like that's what that means. And... That, in, that also re-asks the question, who was the dreamer? Now, there's several answers to that, though. Agent Koopal is Richard the dreamer. Agent Koopal's, like, other self from the other timeline is Laura Palmer the dreamer. Carrie Page is Audrey. Is it Gordon Cole? Or is David Lynch the dreamer? And David Lynch dreams that he's an FBI agent. So, who is the dreamer? That's something Monica Bellucci asked Gordon Cole in his Monica Bellucci dream. Is Monica Bellucci the dreamer? I don't think so. I think it's Laura. Could be Laura. That's... I think Lynch didn't ask... didn't answer the question on purpose. Because he wants us to ponder that for the rest of time. Everything confusing, he basically just wants everyone to come up with their own theories, probably. Yeah. Um... Laura Dern is awesome. When good Diane comes back, um... She does a really good job, but, you know, acting her a little bit different. and Yeah, acting more pleasant than yeah, old yeah. Diane. Uh, you noticed that... Interesting. I may be looking a little bit too much into this, but if you notice... This is something you did not catch. I first noticed good Diane's nails. They're black and white. And her hair. It's red, right? So, those are the colors of a black lodge. No way. What does it mean?! Has the Black Lodge changed Diane because she's been in the Black Lodge for years, like Koopal? Mm -hmm. I feel like maybe it physically transformed or something. Yes. I don't know. Maybe, maybe she's just not. Maybe she's just like the fashion. We don't know about that one. Maybe the costume designers were like, let's just make it red and black and white. Yeah. David Lynch was like, that's a great idea, Sonny. So, after him and Diane meet, Koopal, Diane, and Golden Cole go to the convenience store, and Koopal leaves them and says goodbye to them, and he meets Philip Jeffrey. Now, Philip Jeffrey is confused because he thought bad Koopal, and bad Koopal went in and asked who Judy was, he thought that was good Koopal. So that's why when good Koopal walked in, he was just like, have we had this conversation before? He seemed kind of confused. Did you pick up on that? I did not. And Golden Cole tells Koopal that once he goes back in time and changes the future, Gordon Cole will remember the unofficial version. Which makes me think that after the events of this season, Agent Koopal slash Richard has to see Gordon Cole. He has to find Gordon Cole because the unofficial version, I think, is the events of the original series and the new series. The, the, version, the new version now is everything that changed after he saved Law. So the unofficial version would be this new timeline, the, like the old timeline. You don't think there's just two versions? You think that like one version overrides the other version? It, yeah. Ultimately, you really do? I think it might be a loop. 
because a loop. Once, yeah, you mentioned that. He, it might end. be a loop because the scream at the end. We'll get. We'll to, talk to that. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. There's a lot of different theories, but the fact that he said Golden will remember the unofficial rules and makes me think that the the original timeline is the unofficial rules and because it's been changed, which makes it unofficial. So I don't really know. Um, Koopal, then yeah, like I said, he goes back in time and saves Law in this alternate timeline, and it's a really good scene because we see stuff that happened but in Firewalk with me. But does he save Laura? He, well, he saves her life. He's, he isn't killed. So... But then she disappears, though. And then she's not Laura. She's Carrie Page. So is But Laura... he stops her from being killed, so that I think he in saves one, okay, her. Okay, he saved her in one reality. Yeah. I don't know. You but remember saying something that... about Firewalk with me. Mm -hmm. Well, we see the same scenes of Laura talking to James and she's like, you don't know me, nobody knows me, not even Donna knows me. And then they drive and she's like, I gotta go. I love you, James. So she leaves. <laughs> I hate James. James was always cool. What the hell? Um, he leaves, she leaves him. But during that scene, while she's talking to him, she screams in Fire Walk With Me. We don't know what she's screaming at. But in this new version, we find out that she's screaming at Koopal. So that answered a 25-year-old question I don't think any of us remembered asking. <laughs> so, great job, Lint, and answering the stuff we didn't really need answered, but thank you. At least it clears something We appreciate up. it, yeah. We know something. Um, I think you mentioned about the when he actually does take a hand. Oh, yeah. Okay, so a couple cool uh, shots, or a couple cool um, directing things, I guess. I don't know the terms. Right, but when he saves her, he grabs her hand, creates, like, the alternate timeline. Um, the color changes from black and white to color. It's very cool. I like that. I think music changes a little bit, too. And then also another directing choice or whatever. Uh, cool how, or camera work, cool how he shoots the forest from Cooper's view, you know. We see the scene in Fire Walk With Me um, from, you know, Laura and James' perspective. But this time we see it from Cooper's view, and it's just a cool... It's, it's cool how they do it in the forest. Yeah. I don't know. It's probably like body doubles or something. Yeah, I yeah. I have a feeling. But I thought he did a really good job at like having Laura's face when they actually had her speak new lines. They did a really good job digitalizing it. Because I think yeah, that I was has... like, was this in Fire Walk With Me? And he's like, no. No, no. Those are completely new scenes. Mm -hmm. And I think, okay, a lot of times when they make actors look young, it looks completely awful. Like the Irishman... Oh, you have oh Marvel doing it with um, Michael Douglas. Oh, you have Star Wars doing it with Peter Cushing or Kelly Fissel. It looks terrible. But this time, yeah, that's my reaction to Disney Star Wars. Um, this time, it actually looked good. And I think because the scene's lighting was so dark, you couldn't really see that much details on Lola's face. Maybe so it's I think, because David Lynch is a good director. Well, yeah, but he wouldn't really have the budget for that. So he used lighting... To make things less clear so we wouldn't notice it was cheesy. It's like he knew what he was doing. Yeah, it's like he's a competent director. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Going on. Uh, at the end, towards the end of episode 17, Sarah Palmer is shown destroying Laura's photograph. I don't know what that means, but... It's super awesome, though. It's Because you creepy. get, like, the... Yeah, um, distorted sound. Distorted sound and the distorted, like, visual. Yeah, the way she, like, does it. It's like, she does, like, With the, the mm -hmm. twitching and stuff. Like, the, when the people go back and forth. Yeah. So I noticed that Sarah screams in the background, and she's like, oh. That's the same screams from the pilot episode. And it comes back later, too. Yeah. Well, no. 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 That's a different scream. Okay, That's okay. a scream from Fire Walk With Me. So many screams. Um, Sarah's screams in the background when she destroys Laura's photograph is the same sc scream from the pilot after she finds out that Laura dies over the phone. Remember when Leland calls and tells her that Laura died? Uh-huh. That's the same scream. Okay. So, what does that mean? Is that the same... Is that like the old timeline disappearing? Because of the loop? Because of the loop. The old timeline disappeared because that's around the same time that the timeline changed. So, after Cooper grabs Laura's hand, she disappears when he starts to guide her towards the portal to the Black Lodge. What do you think about that? Like, why do you think she disappeared at that moment? Um, I think what you're saying with the alternate reality is just, like, if, I mean, she didn't disappear, then she wouldn't have died. She did die, though, you know? But she's also alive, but she's not Laura Palmer anymore. You know, he didn't save Laura Palmer, he saved Carrie. 
Yeah. Know? Oh, she became Carrie. And yeah, or she became Carrie and Cooper became Richard. You could see it as that, but I don't know. I think there are either just two dimensions or, you know, like you said, it's a loop. I don't know. Yeah. So at the end of the episode, Julie Cruz sings The World Spins, which is the same song she sings right before Maddie dies in the original series. And I thought it was very fitting that the last single we see at the Roadhouse in the series is Julie Cruz, because she's the first single we see in the pilot episode of the original series. So it's a nice bookend. Like in the original series, remember in the pilot episode when Bobby got into a fight with James and Donna in the Roadhouse in mm-hmm. the pilot? In the background, Julie Cruz was singing. So, and she also sings in this two-part finale. She's the last single and the full single. Did she? Is she one of the people that died? What? Is she one of the people that died? She was old. No. She didn't die? No, she didn't die. She still makes music. Okay. So it's actually a really good single. Check out on Spotify. Um, so yeah. Uh, and before, like, Koopal does all this, he asks Mike to create another version of Dougie to stay with his family. I shed a tear. Yeah. So at least Naomi Watson, good old Sonny Jim are happy in the end. Everybody else, not not so much, but <laughs> at least they're happy. Even though, like, did none of that happen now? Because it's another timeline? That's a good question I didn't think about. What was the point now? Like, did any of that happen? Like, what's up with Janie e, and Sonny Jim? Is he living a completely different life? Because in this timeline... Or maybe w- it all happened, but... Yeah, but that's the unofficial version. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so Are there three timelines? No. No. Okay. So the same Black Lodge scene in the last episode was in the f- full step episodes. The full, same scene from the full step episode is in the last episode with slightly different things happening. Like the, the tree says something different, Lilin says something different, we're going to get into that. Um, something that Tree said that I noticed on my first watch and my second watch, he says, is this the story of the little girl who lives down the lane? Now that's the same exact thing that Audrey said to her necklace husband and when they, she was at her house in some warped reality. So is the Tree somehow connected to Audrey? What are your thoughts on that one? Um, I don't know. I think they're all just connected to Black Lodge. Yeah, because Audrey, Evil Coop was inside of Audrey. So maybe that somehow gave Audrey connections to the Black Lodge. Well, um... Or maybe she was in the Black Lodge. Like, maybe that was some different reality, kind of like the Black Lodge, but different. Could it have something to do with the explosion in the bank? No, you don't think so. Well, that's the explosion that put on a coma which made Evil Coop a rape pool. Okay, so you just think the rape was what connected them to the yeah. evil Black like, Lodge. Yeah, like the fog crawled in the sail's mouth with Skay 4 connects in the Black Lodge. And how um, Evil Cooper raped um, Lord Diane. Lord, Diane, and that's how she's connected. He's, she's and a... Leland, when he was a little boy, he was molested by Bob. Remember they said that in the original series? Yeah. So that's how he's connected to the Black Lodge. Hmm. It's all sex. So do you think Audrey was a doppelganger then? I don't know if she was a doppelganger. I think she's just... And then the real her is the one in the white room? I think she's just having experiences from the two different flashbacks. Like the two different, I mean, two different realities. I don't know if she's a doppelganger. Because why would they create Audrey? Like, I don't get... What would the point of creating a doppelganger of Audrey be? Yeah, I don't know. Um... I don't know. That's a good point, though. Because all the other doppelgangles are, like, evil. Because Audrey knew stuff, didn't she? Not really anything supernatural. Nothing so just about said, Cooper, though? She didn't know her about Cooper in the Black Lodge at all? So you didn't know anything about that. Okay. Um, didn't she have a lot of insight on, like, what was happening, though? In the She was, like, had a lot of facts for Cooper. Well, that was more on, like... Lord, Lord that Lord. was more on, like, Lower Palmer, like... Those clues didn't really make much, like, they won't, they were kind of misleading when you think about it, because those clues were about Ben Horn okay, and his yeah. stuff, and like, the all the stuff, stuff about yeah. the prostitute place. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> I think that just opened up Laura's life, like, more info about Laura's life, and not necessarily her death in the Black Lodge. Okay, it's kind of fuzzy, I don't remember, you, you've seen it more than I have. 
Um, so we see another thing that's slightly different besides the little girl who lives down the lane is we see Leland again, okay. and in the first episode he says save Laura, and in the final episode he says find Laura. Laura. So in the first episode he wants him to go back in time and save Laura. Final episode he already did that, but now Cooper doesn't know where Laura is. So Leland says to find Laura. Is this really Leland or is this Leland's doppelganger? Um, I think that's unclear. I mean, he cares about Laura, so I think that that might actually be Leland being the father, you know? Yeah. You know, I don't know. True. So, um, after they kind of wake up in this new reality, kind of, before the reality shifts, they drive their car at the specific speed and time on a specific highway to cross over into the other and reality. And Dad mentioned it was, like, uh, cool how it was, like, light in the dark when they switched yeah. over. It was, like, a... It's like they time traveled in a way. Uh -huh. Cause you know what year is this? You know who? We're gonna talk about that later. So I've mentioned before that there's different timelines and there's similar scenes throughout the series. Very similar scenes, different similar camera angles. There's a whole list here. The, we have a, we have a whole list. We have the same Doctor Jacoby ran with slightly different phrasing, but mostly the same exact speech. The fucks are at it again. Same exact thing. Um, Nadine's watching, making the same exact expressions. So that's two things. Either A, Dr. Jacoby just has the same script over and over again, and Nadine's just really into it for some, for some reason. Or B, these are two different realities with the same speech. So in both realities, Dr. Jacoby ended up doing a podcast talking about Deep State and all the fuckery they do. So, I think it's different timelines, similar scenes. What do you think about that? I think um, in the 2020 election, Dr. Jacoby would vote for Gary Johnson. Okay, let's move Okay, on. then. Um, so, another timeline, similar scenes, is in Audrey's dance, when a fight breaks out, and this guy is like, That's my wife! And he starts beating up this other guy. It's very similar to James and the Glove Man versus the Ball Guy. Because the guy at the Roadhouse is like, that's my wife, and he starts beating up Jim, James. So I think those are also different timelines, similar scenes happening. Okay. Because it's like a parallelism. I, I don't that know about that time. one, but... I mean, maybe. And, and then, this one right here is... This, yeah, and then the, uh, another one, which I noticed on my first watch, was when Dougie crawls slowly to the outlet, he moves his shoulders and his legs in the same way this Roadhouse lady was... Totally just one scene, this lady. She's just in this one scene. Yeah. She see, after effect. these two guys literally throw her out of her seat at the roadhouse, which is kind of rude, but well, funny. Well, they, they gently pick her up. Yeah, they gently pick her up and drop on the ground. She's like, I'm saving the seat. Yeah. That happened to me once at a concert. Um, <laughs> story for another day. Um, but she crawls through the dance floor in the same exact way Dougie crawls to his outlet. So I think those are also different timelines, similar scenes. Because I think some of the Roadhouse scenes are on a different timeline, but then the other ones are at this normal timeline. I agree with that. Um, and then I think that two characters in the series, besides Diane and Cooper, are crossing between the two timelines. Both Audrey and Sarah. This might be because they were both affected by the Black Lodge. Sarah so eating the frog, Audrey being raped by Bob. So, Audrey... Throughout, the ser throughout this new series, she mentions that she thinks she's in another place. She doesn't feel like herself. Which is also what Koopal's... He, Koopal doesn't feel like himself when he crosses into this other timeline. So I think that the scenes with Audrey and her necklace husband at her house, in the roadhouse, is a different timeline from her in the white room like I've mentioned earlier. But she realizes this throughout the season. And Sarah freaks out when she goes to the, rest when she goes to the supermarket... And she, find, and she notices that those different jokies as the world last week when she came. Either they changed the jokies or she crossed into another timeline at a similar grocery store. So maybe she was in two separate versions of the same supermarket. And she's picking up on these things. Maybe similar events like this happen in her life. Like she crosses into other dimensions where things are slightly similar but a little, little bit different. What do you have to say about that one? Um, yeah, I agree. It's definitely notable because she freaks out quite a bit, and it's, like, one of her very few scenes she has, and, um, I, I agree like, with that, yeah. Yeah, I, I think Lynch put that in for a reason. I agree. 
Um, Lynch, if you're watching this, I love you. I love you, David Lynch. Please let me interview you. That would be awesome. Okay, so in the finale, when they're at this hotel, motel, when Koopal's checking in, Diane's looking out a window and she sees another Diane in the parking lot. What could that other Diane what be? What was that? Yeah. Is it the other Diane? Is that Linda? And they're switching <gasps> bodies? Ooh. Is that Linda? Because, yeah, after, um, Koopal seems different when he enters this new timeline. He's much more serious than the agent Koopal we know and love. More quiet, too. Yeah, he's more quiet. Um, he's somewhere in between good Koop and bad Koop. He's neutral Koop. He does not, um, show enthusiasm for the coffee, nor does he show disgust. He is very, um... Very, he just takes very it neutral. passively. Passively. Yeah. So this Speaking is how we know. passively, um, there's the Koopal Diane sex scene, which I think is a strange ritual that helps them cross over to the other dimension. Uh, this is, I feel like out of everything, this is like the most... Uncomfortable? Uh, I wouldn't say, I mean, I guess it, it is uncomfortable, but it's just the most confusing to me. Like a lot of other things you can kind of make up theories, but this, I mean, you said ritual and I guess that's the closest to a theory I could think of. But I think like, it's part of the ritual that makes them pass over to the other dimension. Yeah. Um, both don't, don't seem to be enjoying it. They look like they have to do it. And she's putting his hands on his face like that. That's like really she doesn't want to see him. Um, I don't know what that's about. Um... Maybe she doesn't like his face because there was the evil Koopal thing that happened 25 years ago. So she knows that she has to do this, but she doesn't want to do it. Okay, that's interesting, yeah. But why is the really romantic music playing yeah. over this very uncomfortable, awkward scene? That's something I don't understand. Maybe they do love each other, but they don't want to have sex at the moment. So they'll just... They have to... They, even though they love each other, they know that they have to do this, so they don't take pleasure on it. Yeah, or maybe they just know this is it. I don't know. Like, it's the last time they see each the other? That's the last, yeah. I don't know. Because after the sex scene, we never see Diane again. They when, both change. They're, yeah, it's like a different reality. Like, when he, he leaves the... When he wakes up, he sees a note from Linda, and the names are Richard and Linda, which is the same names... That the giant told Koopal about in the first scene of episode one. He says, remember, Witzold and Linda. And when Witzold Koopal leaves the hotel, I, it, we notice that it's a different hotel, and he's driving a different car, and Diane is missing. And they're in a different state. Yeah. They're like in a completely different city. They left in Twin Peaks, and they entered this town in... Texas, um, Texas, right? Texas, Odessa or something. We know that because the... The sign says... Cowboy rapist... Oh, wait, we're going to get to we're that. Good, we're, we're good now. <laughs> so, that, we, he wakes up from this, and he seems dazed and confused. Not the popular movie from the 90s. Da just dazed and confused. All right, all right, all right. Um, Is that the right movie? I don't know. Oh, okay. Never seen it. Was this series a, a dream by this Richard guy? Was Koopal ever real? Maybe Richard had this dream, and now he thinks he's Koopal. Is it a Mahalan Drive situation where Richard created the entire situation in his head to cope with something? I don't... There's a lot of theories that could be drawn from that. What do you have to say about that? Do you think it's similar to Mahalan Drive? If the whole entire series was a dream by Richard? Yeah. And he uh, created this Koopal character to help him cope with being an FBI agent. Uh... No, I don't think so. Hmm. Okay, then. So... He's trying to find Laura, and Judy's is the diner where Carrie Page works. Carrie Page is the other version of Laura. And in that, uh, diner, like you said, Koopal neither graciously accepts or <laughs> denies the coffee. Neutral Koopal, so he's neither good or bad. He's a completely different person, I think. Um, but we still see that he's a good guy, because neutral Koopal stops some <laughs> cowboy rapists. <laughs> And melts the guns or something. Yeah, and he throws them in the... Greaser. Greaser. He's like, how do I... Never mind. Yeah. Then he grabs Carrie Page's address from the waitress who works with her. Um, I don't know how that waitress knows her address. Maybe they're friends. We don't... We it's have like, no idea. It's, um... It's almost like you kind of think that Agent Cooper is kind of aware of what's happening, or... I don't know, it's like, he, he knows... He knows what he has he to do. He knows what he has to do. 
Like, he knows he has to find her. He knows he has to bring her back. He knows... He knows that's... How does he know that's he worked at this diner, though? Yeah, exactly. Is it because he saw Judy's and that connected some dots for him? I think he just knows, and then Judy's just... Obviously, like, uh... And you notice something about Judy's diner. Um, do you want to say that? Uh... And Carrie's apartment. Oh, yeah. I, this, I think this was intentional by Lynch. I mean, it has to be, especially in her apartment. So, in the diner, I don't know why I noticed this, but they have, like, pictures of horses, right? Like, four or whatever. And then, later in um, Carrie's house, there's... Um, Same pictures uh, of horses? Uh, or, no, like, little a, figurines? There's a, no, there's one white horse figurine. Um, surrounded by, like, a blue dish, and that's all that's on her little, uh, mantelpiece. Yeah. So, and they, they focus on that for a couple seconds, and, like, I feel like the pictures on the wall, I was like, I don't know if this could be a connection, but when you see the horse in her house, it's kind of like, I think maybe Lynch is referring to the horse. In the original series, mm -hmm. because before Maddie Ferguson died, and before Laura Palmer died, Sarah was on drugs given to her by Bob slash Leland, so she'd pass out during these events. Before she passes out, both times she sees a white horse. Oh, it's white too? Yeah, that's okay, a white horse. Okay, well, I think that means And that. we see a white horse in the Black Lodge. Cooper sees the white horse in, like, episode one. Mm -hmm. So he... The white horse is a recurring symbol throughout the series before something bad happens to one of the Sarah Lee characters. Um, but we find out that even though Richard isn't Cooper, or is he Cooper? He has the same memories as Cooper. He's still with the FBI, and he still has a badge. So, does he know Golden Cole in this timeline? Mm -hmm. I don't... Does he? Maybe. Does Golden Cole know him? Is Golden Cole even real? Well, he said... Philip Jeffrey said that Golden Cole would remember the unofficial version. Oh, okay. So it makes me think that Golden Cole, because he had dreams of the series, one with Monica Bellucci and another one, he dreamed that Laura Palmer was at his door crying. That means he'll remember the whole Laura Palmer story. Because... I know, but is he in that reality? Do you think Gordon Cole and the other characters are in that reality? Well, Philip Sarah Jeffrey... Sarah Palmer might not be in that reality. Hmm. She's not the house. True. I, Maybe, I think they time travel or something. I'm not really sure. But he said find Gordon Cole, too. Like, he'll remember the unofficial fools, and... So I feel like Gordon Cole exists. Maybe not the same age as he is. Maybe not the same name. Maybe not the same name. But I feel like he's somewhere in this reality. I, so they could find I also feel like Sarah Palmer might be in that reality, too. Yeah. Okay, so the number six is the same number on the telephone wires. The same boy who died, like, in the same scene at Harry Dean Stanton's town, where the boy is hit by Richard's call. Not Richard, evil couple's son, Richard. Where Harry Dean Stanton lives. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not. Maybe it's just a similar thing in another reality, because that happens in Texas, while Harry Dean Stanton's thing happens in Washington. Six is a reoccurring number, though, right? A couple yeah, times in the that series. was one of the numbers that came out of Bowie's smoke thing, was the number six, in one of the earlier episodes. And the finale it was number eight. And it was like an infinite symbol, because the little ball went around the eight infinite, which makes me think that this is a loop. Didn't it also have to do something with the owls, though? Didn't your dad say that? Yeah. That was the, also the owl symbol on the wing, the green wing, uh -huh. which takes people to the Black Lodge. Um, you said, I didn't really notice this, but I think you kind of did catch on to this. Uh, the... Yeah, so when Ethan Cooper slash Richard finally knocks on Laura Palmer's door, he finds that she's Carrie Page and she has no memory of being Laura Palmer, and Cooper's trying to catch her up, and, she, and he's like, you lived in Twin Peaks, Washington, and your father's name is Leland, and she doesn't really get it. She's like, what? But then he says, your mother's name is Sarah, and she's like, Sarah, as if she remembers Sarah. She says it as if she's remembering it. So, Carrie Page remembers Sarah's name. So, something about Sarah, maybe it's that it's her mom, maybe it's repressed memories from all the traumas she had as a child. She wanted to create a new life and forget about her past. Maybe those are repressed memories. Uh, I don't really know about that one. What do you have to say about that one? Um, yeah, I think that she remembers Sarah Palmer's name because, I mean, I guess she's the only one that's alive in the other reality, or she's the only one that, um, I don't know, like, I don't know why, but, well, you mentioned that later you hear Sarah scream or whatever. Yeah. Um, Coop, so, Coopo, to get Laura slash Carrie's memories back, he wants to take Carrie to her old house in Washington. 
And before that, so he says, like, I have to get my things before I go. I have to get a jacket. So Cooper walks in and he sees this dead body on Kaylee's couch. Who is this dead body? We maybe don't it's her know. Husband, maybe. I don't, I don't know, know. Maybe not. The, th- the point is, she did something bad and she has to leave town. So that's why she's so willing to go with Witchold. Uh huh. Um, so that, like any other occasion, she said she'd close the door on Cooper. Mm-hmm. But this time she actually travels with him because she wants to leave town. So, um, during when they're driving, another call passes this, and my dad had this theory that the other call is Diane and Cooper entering this new reality, which kind of goes into the loop theory, like the time travel loop theory. I didn't notice it, but he said that like there was light, there was like um like an unnatural. It focused like, on the car. It focused specifically on the car, kind of with the light. So that maybe is a hint towards it being. Um, yeah, and then little. Carrie says, is this call behind this following them? I think it's a different call. We don't really know. Maybe it's their call? Like, part of the loop theory is that it's like a loop they keep going there? Maybe? I'm not really sure on that one. But the fact that Carrie pointed it out makes me think it's important. I don't know. I don't think it is. I think there's something legit. <laughs> yeah. Maybe though, Maybe that wasn't even planned. Like, maybe, maybe there's there a call. a car behind them. Yeah. And it's uh, like, this car is going too slow, and they went around. Yeah. So during the car ride, Carrie starts talking about trying to keep a clean home in Odessa, and it's a long way. So is she slowly remembering her old life? Because I said earlier that maybe Carrie was Laura, but she repressed her memories because of a traumatic childhood and started a whole new life in another city after she went missing. Because... In the book, it says that instead of dying, Laura went missing from Twin Peaks and never found her. I just think they actually drove from Texas to Washington, and it took 27 hours. So, they didn't really have much to say, so he added as much footage as he could. Yeah, That's but the theory. things he says, though, it leaves up to more interpretation, which <laughs> makes me think further um, that... She actually was Laura Palmer. She moves to Odessa, Texas to try to forget her old life. She tries to keep a clean life, but her old, reckless ways come back to haunt her, which results in that guy dying. You're probably right. You probably know more than David Lynch himself. That's not true. David Lynch is the mastermind. He'll never reveal his secrets, but we could try to get him out of him. Um, so when they finally read Sarah Palmer's house, the woman in the house is not Sarah Palmer. Her name is Mrs. Tremond. Which is the same way... I don't know how you remember all this stuff. The same name as the old creamed corn lady from the original series in Fire Walk With Me. And she says she bought it from Mrs. Chalfont, which is another name the creamed corn lady went by. So, in the, in the original series and Fire Walk With Me, she goes by two different names. One of them is Tremond, the other one is Chalfont. Um, so, I feel like I'm coming at something here. <laughs> Accurate. Um, but something I found on, like, the behind-the-scenes footage is that the woman who plays Tremond in this new series, in the final scene, is the woman who actually owns the Palmer house in real life. Like, she's not even an actress. Oh, really? Yeah. No way! That's, yeah, because David, David Lentz said, like, when he, one of the film scenes at the Palmer house, um, he asked her for permission, and he actually... I guess he knew this woman, and he asked her to be in that scene. No way! Yeah, she had no acting experience. I like how she, uh, you know, two times she, like, leans to the side to talk to her husband. I think that's kind of funny or kind of cool. Yeah. But that also begs the question of where is Sarah Palmer? This is her house. And the last line Cooper says, what year is this? Makes me think that, okay, my theory is... Like, Laura Palmer escapes Twin Peaks, hides out in Texas, begins a new life, starts to forget her old life, which makes me think that this is also 2014, the alternate 2014 we see in the new series. It's two separate 2014s. Um, like, that explains the similar sounds going on, the similar scenes. So that's what you is, alternate 2014, the one where Laura didn't die, she went missing, went to another town. What do you think about that? I just think, um, I don't know, he probably has a good theory about it, but I just think in general it just begs the question, like, the final thought, like, where are they? What's it? What, what has happened? You know? What year is this? And after he asks that, 
Carrie Page looks at the house, and I hear Sarah Palmer scream Laura's name, like she did when she was calling for Laura, like, Laura, like she was calling her, and Laura screams, and I think this means she finally remembers her past life. After decades of trying to put her life behind her and repressing those memories, she finally remembers everything that happened. Both timelines. She remembers what happened in the, in the unofficial version, the one we saw in the original series and the new series, is studying the molds with the memories from the new version. So what do you think happens after that, then? I don't know. I think the timelines somehow mold. Okay. And that's what means the series is over. Because the timelines that... start to meet each other. Okay. And maybe that causes a new loop. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. I don't know. What do you think so, about that? So, uh, Laura's never actually saved. It's just a loop. An endless loop. It's an endless loop where she's both saved and she doesn't save. Okay, gotcha. It's the grandfather paradox. You know, when you go back in time, you kill your grandfather, but that means it never gives birth to your son, which gives birth to you, so you never go back in time and kill your grandfather. It's basically that. Cooper goes back in time and saves Laura, but, like, from Laura's perspective, she never died. So, he never had to go back in time and save Laura. So this creates two timelines that go in a loop. It's the grandfather paradox. Interesting. Um, That's a good theory. Yeah. So And then the final shot of the series, which plays over Koopel's... Well, what plays over the end credits is Laura back in the Black Lodge whispering something in the Koopel's ear. This has happened plenty of times. Where it's happened. Yeah, in the original series, it happened in season one in his dream, which he finds out in season two... She says, my father killed me. But then it happens twice in season three. No, three times in season three. One in episode two, one at the beginning of episode 18, and one during the end credits of episode 18. Is she saying the same thing each time, you think? I don't think she says the same thing in each time. Really? Okay. Um, see, I don't think she does. Because it's the same scene. It's the same same scene, but they look noticeably different. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like she says something else. But, yeah. And I feel like they're... Obviously, at different times. Yeah. And they mention throughout the series that Laura Palmer has missing pages in her diary. Something I noticed, Carrie Page's name ends in Page. Page. So maybe she's a physical manifestation of Laura's secrets. That was really interesting. Or maybe it's just a thematic element that Lynch added to kind of help us fill in the dots. Um, Maybe the whole, like, Carrie Page, Richard, Linda reality is some physical manifestation of those missing pages. And we go back to the question which has been driving at us throughout this entire series and fire walk with me is who is the dreamer? Do you have any thoughts on who the dreamer is? Well, I guess we already covered like what the options would be. Um, should we each decide um, one definitive answer? Just for Maybe. Us? Okay, I don't know because... Who do you think most likely is the dreamer? Do you have I an think opinion? if anybody's the dreamer... It's a hard question. It's a very hard question. Because we see a lot of people in the series dream. We see Gordon Cole, Audrey, Richard, Cooper, Linda. No, not Linda. Uh, Laura, Carrie. I think Laura's a dreamer, okay? She is a dreamer, remember? Yeah. She is like a... I mean, also not just necessarily like in this whole alternate reality thing. In the Black Lodge thing. And um, the Bob thing. But like, you know how she's like... Dreaming in the original series? Like, yeah. In her diary? She had the same has, dream like, as Cooper did. So maybe... Not just that, but, like, how she's writing her diary, like, she's fantasies, like, she's dreams. Like, is that, am I being, like, really dumb? I don't know. She I is, like, a dreamer. Sense. But she, yeah, she does also have a lot of dreams. Yeah. She but has everyone has dreams. dreams! She has that dream of Annie in her bed telling her to, that the good day was in the lodge and to write it in her diary. So maybe that has something to do with it. She writes a lot of dreams in her diary. Yeah. But Koopa is also known for his dreams, as is Golden Cole with his Monica Bellucci dream. And, um, I don't know. A lot of people have dreams. So I think the main purpose of the series is for us to guess who the dreamer is. We'll never know. We'll never know. Because will Lint make Molten Peaks material? I n- we never thought that the show was going to come back after all these years. He did it on an announcement, surprise announcement, February 22nd, something 11.30 a.m., the same time that Koopel says in the pilot. So we would never know if Koopel's even, I mean, if Lynch is even planning making Twin Peaks into your role. He said one time in an interview years ago 
that there was a possibility in a continuation because he says that Carrie Page's whole story is calling to him. The resolution of the whole story, at least, is calling to him. So, I have a feeling that he probably won't make another series, but if he does, it would be more about Carrie Page in Witchwood timeline. We probably won't see that much from the original timeline, which would explain why there wouldn't be that many people from the original series, because a lot of people died. It would mainly focus on Sarah Lee, Kyle McLaughlin, Golden Cole. I say make a short film with Sarah Lee. Um, Sarah Pommel? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, no, uh, girl, uh, please. Who? Uh, Kyle McLaughlin? Laura Palmer, yeah. Sarah Lee. That's Sarah Lee, yeah. Sarah Lee, Kyle McLaughlin, and uh, Leland. Or, um... Maybe a movie. I think a movie would work out. I mean, like, a short film or a movie. Or, I think he should write a novella or, like, a short book. Um, yeah. I think that would be very cool. But... I would buy it. About the series is, not all these questions need answers. Yeah, that's the thing. I feel like it, it could stand alone. Like, this the, is great. When the original series ended, it ended on two, th two major cliffhangers, maybe three major cliffhangers. It was mainly, like... Audrey and Pete in that bomb bank explosion. Cooper being possessed by Bob. What happened to Annie? What happened to Ben? That never got answered, Annie. That never got answered. No, well, in the book, it says he's in, like, a hospital, because he's also in a catatonic state like Cooper. Oh, gotcha. Like, Dougie. So that gets answered in the books, but... Um... Yeah, there's a lot of things like that that don't get answered. And I think... It, and in a new series, we get resolutions to most of those questions, but they also open up a lot of different answers. So I think that... Even if Lynch does bring the show back again, which is highly unlikely at this point, I don't think he'd he'd answer those questions, but then he'd just ask him a bunch of new ones. Because the whole appeal of Twin Peaks is unanswered questions, and that's the reason fans continue to talk about the series to this day. They like to speculate on the series, which is the point. The ratio of answer to unanswered just keeps getting bigger, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Every time they answer a question, they ask like, three more questions. Now, normally in shows, that bothers me. Like, Lost bothered me a lot. It's just Lost, fun here. But in this, it's fun. Because... It's, like, kind of funny, too. It's just like, what what the hell? And it's like, but whatever, it's what Lynch. The hell? It's Lynch. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's been a staple of Lynch's movies since Eraserhead. Um, yeah, that's been a staple of Lynch's movies since Eraserhead. He's continued the theme in... Lost Highway, uh, In an Empire, other movies he made, um, What Did Jack Do? <laughs> do you have something to say? Not really, uh, I guess to close it, should we just say, like, how do we, uh, how do we rate this series? How do we rate this series compared to, like, all the Twin Peaks? Like, well, do, season how do we feel one, about it? Okay, I'm gonna give my review for, like, each season's last movie. Okay. Season one is a B plus because it was great. It was so different compared to the 90s television at the time. There was nothing else like it. Season two started off really good. The middle part kind of sucked, but they picked it up towards the ending. So I'm gonna give it a B minus. Okay. Because it's, like, at worst it's a C minus. At best it's an A plus. Okay. So that's kind of like a, a, like a B minus. The movie Fire Walk With Me, I think that's an A minus because it's a fantastic movie. Though it doesn't really answer any questions, it just introduces new ones. And then the new series, I give it an A+, because like the original series, it completely reinvents television and how television is told. It was filmed as an 18-hour movie, and they divided the episodes up later. And they did a, they did a very unique way of structuring those stories. Um, so I'm going to give it an A+. It was great seeing everybody back again, but not dependent on nostalgia, also creating new elements... So I think it's the perfect revival and the only revival to do it correctly, except maybe Parks and Recreation. Um, what would you give each season in the movie? Alright, uh... I'm no film professor. Um, but... Let me say... Um, first... I don't know about the seasons, I kind of mix them all together. So, I guess, original Twin Peaks. 90s series. I give that a a B, okay. Um, cause some of it's boring. I don't I don't love all the episodes. Now I'd say the movie. Uh, that's one of my favorite movies ever. Fly walk with me. Yeah, I gotta watch it again recent um soon. I would give that a solid A. 
with a little bit of a plus in there. Um, mostly because I love Sara Lee's performance and Leland's. Now, the new series, I would give this uh, solid A minus. Solid A minus. It's pretty great. Um, some of the stuff is a little bit boring though. I don't know. Some of the Dougie stuff, I don't know about. But, of all in all, I would say it goes Firewalk With Me, new series, old series. But they're all great, and I thank Jacob Reed for introducing me to Twin Peaks and explaining all of this madness to the best of his ability. I have no abilities, I'm just making shit up. This was a waste of time for all of you people. Thanks for wasting your time with us. Thank you. For this. I mean, I bet if you add all these together, it's probably like three hours of reviews. You honestly should just go watch the show yourself. I mean, they probably have. Like, if they haven't, they'd be so confused. If you guys haven't watched this series, and you're on part five of our review, what are you doing here? Why? I... I... Are you confused as to what we're talking about? Like, really even confused as to what we're talking about. So I have no idea. Why, why did you spend an hour listening to this? <laughs> but if you did watch the series and you enjoyed it and you have theories of your own, please drop it into the comments. Because I'd love to know your theories. I think the thing about Twin Peaks is that there's so many theories that a lot of them could be right. Like, there's no such thing as a bad theory. Uh-huh. I mean, there probably is. But, like, I feel like Twin Peaks is such a versatile show. And that's why people still talk about it years later, because everybody could create their own theory. So seriously, like, tell us why our theory is dumb, or tell us your theory, or, you know, we want to hear it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, because this has always been one of my favorite series, ever. Um, it's just great mysticism. I love, like, the supernatural stuff, that everything's not really explained. I love shows like that, so... Everybody, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, all that other stuff. Uh, thanks for coming on, Allison. This was a fun, fun, confusing journey. Lots of fun and confusion. But... Yeah. Um, if you guys, if, if you guys want to see more of these kind of like long form one on one discussions, every other Monday, me and Hole talk about Fargo. She so might be in some of these other ones, but she was definitely in the first two episodes. Um, so yeah, those. It's a little bit more straightforward with Fargo. Like, you don't have to dissect every little thing, like we do with Twin Peaks. Yeah. So if you want something a little bit less confusing to talk about, Fargo. Even though it's a great show in itself. Um, it's it's great so far. If you the, haven't started watching it, it's on Hulu. It's great. Yeah. All full seasons are pretty good. Um, and the creator of Fargo, the TV show at least, he was very inspired by Twin Peaks. He was inspired by David Lynch when he made the TV show. There's kind of a couple odes to the original yeah, series. Yeah, there's a lot of... Like, season three of Fargo has a cameo from somebody who was in Twin Peaks. And I don't want to spoil it for Alison Hill because... Oh, okay. She hasn't seen... Season three, she's only seen one, two, and four in the movie. But season three has a really good cameo. And it's also a reference to The Big Lebowski. Really? So, that's something for another video. But, thanks everybody for watching. I hope everybody has a nice night and stay safe and peace.